And I'm here in the Coates' headquarter. In the back, you see a mosaic of our two founders of Coates and uh, the company and uh, the whole system. Yes, and uh, I'm happy that I'm with you. And I'm not alone. Of course, I'm alone somehow, but I have some equipment with me. And therefore, in order to show you, I will switch the camera perspective. So I have something prepared so I can really have a live demonstration for you further on. But let's at first step start with the presentation I've prepared. So I need to share my screen. This is the title of my presentation. The idea is how can the cloud, how can industry 4.0 can help you with software engineering, can help you with automation engineering. This is my topic and I hope this will be interesting for you and the, the audience. The first step, I want to give an introduction. What does the term cloud make you think of? There are different possibilities. Perhaps you think of music and video platforms. So Netflix, Spotify, all these platforms are very, um, very often used and many people think on such platforms. But maybe you think that you have uploaded your latest holiday photos to your family albums. So by the way, this is a, an album that I have recently made where we had a family holiday. So we have uploaded some photos somewhere in Italy. Maybe this is your first idea. But as engineers, as uh, universal stuff, you think of course on machine learning, perhaps on artificial intelligence, but maybe you just think of bad weather. Yeah, this is as well cloud. We know that public cloud system provides us a lot of stuff. For example, infinitive storage capacity. Of course, it's not infinite, but um, if we see here, and this is a price list of Amazon Web Services, that the, the, the um, amount of memory you can book is far away to believe, then we can already talk about infinite. So you see here over 500 terabytes you, you can charge, but you, you can have thousands of terabytes in case you want to. So cloud provides storage capacity as well as computing capacities. You can just book CPU performance as much as you like, but as well countless services that we can benefit from as well here, a screenshot from Amazon Web Services. You see up here, there are many, many different categories and in every category there are different services offered. However, how does all that help us for software engineering and automation? I have four different categories I want to talk about. The first one I have uh, named application repository. What this term means, this is something I will explain in the next few minutes. But let's come back at first step. What is the difference between family photos and automation projects? First step, the target group. Yeah, of course, here we have the, the family, which is the target for watching the videos, watching the photos. On the other hand, there are the industrial engineers, industrial staff who want to access to automation projects. And if they're available in the cloud, then we have almost the same situation. The file format, of course, with the family photos, we have something like JPEGs, PNGs, perhaps MP4 videos or movies, raw pictures. In automation industry, we have totally different formats, well, maybe project files, compressed project files, um, device descriptions, things like that. Next difference, the viewing and editing tool. So if we want to watch the videos or the photos, then we need something like Windows uh, um, Photo Gallery or IR Fan View or some other tools that enable us to watch the videos or the photos. For these automation projects, we need, of course, special tools for that. For example, Coatsus. And the next difference is the target system where all these files are executed. So ideally, all these platforms are directly connected with the target system. So in case I go to a cloud and double click on a photo, then 
the photos downloaded and opened with my favorite photo gallery viewer. And the th same thing should be with automation project. Now, is that possible? Yes, it is. Therefore, I'm here and I want to show you the CodeSys automation server. Before I want to go into a live demonstration, I want to give you some brief first introduction of, about what the CodeSys automation server is. As you see here on the picture, there are different, let's say, machines, different uh, installations, which are all connected to a cloud, yeah? no matter if it's that windmill or that robot or that uh, manufacturing hall, there are a lot of controllers inside and they're all connected to the cloud. And in this cloud, there are now digital twins, information about the physical information running on the target controller. And the big issue is that now somebody with a web browser, and this is running here on a tablet, can easily access to this digital twin and do some administration stuff. This is the basic idea. You have a direct connection from the controller to the cloud and somebody with a web browser can register to a special cloud account, as we call it cloud tenant, and can then do something with that information. And the first thing you will be able to do is to access to the automation projects in a kind of application repository, in a kind of database for these application projects. So, and this is something I want to show in live mode. And therefore I switch to my HTML browser. In this case, it's Mozilla Firefox. And you see that I'm here in the CodeSys automation server and I need to log in at first step to the right URL. So the right tenant, and then I can log in with my login credentials. And of course, there can be several login credentials for different users in different roles so that we have a very fine separation of the possibilities and rights, what somebody can do. Of course, in this case, I have all the rights. I'm the administrator, so I can show you almost everything. The first step, we, we take a, a short list. We um, go to the PLCs and take a short look at the so-called topology view. This is a, a graphic view of the possibilities that I can prepare for my application. And you see in this case, it's uh, somehow a picture of, of, of the, the cube here with a lot of different hardware devices. And if I click on that one here, on that plus, I get a list of all the PLCs which are in front of this front page. Huh? So I can go, for example, to this device here and get some first initial information see which uh, runtime system is executed there, which firmware version, which application is running, this is this one here, and so on. So a lot of inf informative information, informative stuff that I can use for my engineering. Now, but we said we are talking about the files, about the, the photos, talking about the family album or the automation projects, talking about industry. How can I check them? You see here, there is a category applications. And I a, if I click on that, and I have applications which I have uploaded to my server. So let's take the first one here because this is the one I have worked with and I've prepared it, of course, for this live demonstration. You can see that there is an application name in, in here and there are as well different versions of this application. So I could check a special version but let's just take this one here. And what can I do with it? There are different possibilities. Perhaps we, we just click on it to see some of these possibilities. For example, I get the first idea when this version of that project was recently uploaded. So you see here that it was done by me yesterday. But uh, if I choose another one, then you see that there are maybe older versions as well available here. Oh, this is already more than a year old. Now let's switch back to the, to the latest version. Then I can go to, to a second register deployment, and I can see whether this application is already running somewhere in my installation here. Yeah, and I see, okay, this is running here on that recipe touch PMAR, and this is this, exactly this device in here. And then there may be some parameters which I could use in order to check what is possible. 
Let's go back to the list before. Oops. If I click around with the mouse, then it's just because the zoom window is annoying me sometimes, so I have to move it backward and forward. There's another thing I can do. I can go to this button here. Of course, there are some other possibilities. For example, I could give some permission rights or even delete the project. I won't do that right now. But this button here is the interesting one. I can open this project now with CodeSys. Of course, not in the cloud so far, but on my local computer. So if I do so, the project is downloaded. My local installation of CodeSys on my computer here is started. And this project will be downloaded and can then be accessed and edited directly in here. In order to do so, I need to give uh, to enter my login credential once again, because it's not clear that I have the access at this stage. Click OK. And then I see the whole list of different application once again of different versions once again as I said I take the latest one here I open that of course I had it already opened before therefore this message came along but nevertheless we want to really work from the scratch I don't want to overwrite things well, maybe we overwrite everything which we already have so just to take the original version directly from the cloud platform by the way the cloud platform is not hosted here it's hosted on our on a distributed server. We are working in this case with Amazon Web Services. The cloud server is at that position here located in Frankfurt, about 400 kilometers from here. So therefore, this download speed is, of course, limited due to the internet speed I have here on my computer and the, the overall uh, limits of my connection. And you see down here that there are some information displayed of this download. This is, of course, much slower than com compared to the opening of a project directly from my file system. So let's still wait a little bit. As I have one hour for the presentation, I think uh, it's worth to wait that in order to really show you the, the, the way somebody would work in a real installation. So almost finished. We already see the project structure here. It's a very simple project. So in case you have larger project, this would of course take longer. However, you have the access to it. And I say that I want to work exactly with this version. This is something new in CodeSys that in case there were some um, packages missing, you could install them, but I don't need them. So maybe we close all these editors just to concentrate on the project. As I said, it's just a very simple project. However, there's a visualization inside and this uh, explains the download times because all the visualizations need, of course, to be downloaded too. I have here a um, generator of um, a graph. And this is exactly what you see in here that display perhaps a little bit small Perhaps, um, yeah, I will be later showing you how this works in general. And there's one variable here, X enables. Oh, we can show it in here in the visualization. So there is that graph that um, generate a output displayed in here. And there's one variable, X enable, and this one could switch off that generator. And we want to use it right now in the visualization and exactly on that panel here. So therefore I go to my visualization and add um, rotary switch. Let's put it here and let's connect it to this variable I just showed. So it's this X enable out of the PU sign. Okay, oops, I, I saved my project and then I can now synchronize this project back to the cloud. So as if I had uploaded my photos back to my family photo album. So I give a commit message, for example, switcher edit. And again, now that takes some time. <laughs> the first step, 
the application is compiled. And then both the application source code and the native code, so the compiled code for the target device, which is set in here in that device description, are uploaded to the cloud system. And we see here that there are some uploading messages. And as soon as everything has been uploaded, we can go back to the automation server in the cloud system and check whether the upload was successfully made. Let's see. So uploading the files. Okay. It seems that we are ready now. Let's go back and perhaps we refresh the view of it. Here we are. You see that there is a, a new blue box showing us that there's an update available. And it's exactly that update switcher enabled that we have just uploaded. And I will go back to that detailed view of the application that we see that it's exactly the time I've uploaded it. So you see that here in Germany, it's 3.20 PM. So not the morning like in your location. Okay. So we can see that we can work with automation projects as we did with our family photos. I have all the possibilities. I have a connection to my IDE, to my integrated development environment. Of course, I could have changed as well the PLC code. I did not do that because it's easier to, to view something. Now, the next step would be, of course, to bring this changed application to the target device. How can we do that? As we already said, we go to the deployment and we select that device here. And by the way, we could have selected several of them as these are all, let's say, <laughs> similar hardware devices. They're all Raspberry Pis because it's a very, let's say, common and cheap platform. Therefore, we are using it very, very often for tests or for demonstrations like that. And I could now select further of these devices to get the same application. I won't do that right now, but just to show you, it's just a few clicks. And then I can say apply changes. Then I have to confirm this one and you will immediately see that now the visualization has disappeared because there was a message sent to the controller via that cloud server in Frankfurt that this application is now stopped and there's a new application downloaded in here. Again, this one will take some seconds, some a minute perhaps, and then we should have the updated application running here. We will immediately see it by the rotary switcher then that, that we have added into the visualization. Okay, here we are. We already see that the sign here was appearing, that the download was progressing. And here we are. We can see that everything is working. Now we can see here that there is that graph drawn. And if I switch here, then there is no more output of that code generator of that um, triangle. So and switch it on again to show that this is really live working. Yeah, to be honest, it's not good to see, but in a minute, I will show you a better view of it. But before I do so, I go back to the presentation. So we have seen that there is an application repository of which I can immediately benefit from that cloud platform where the devices are connected to. Now there's another point I will show you in a live mode, remote debugging. What does that mean? If I have a remote access to an automation device, I have now different possibilities. I can, for example, use the remote access for supervision. And this is exactly what I said. I can now see that visualization, which is running in a completely different network than my computer, directly on my computer here. So I go back to my present uh, to my automation server, to the device, to this one here, and there's a small button called web visualizations. There's one web visualization available. If I click on it, there is a special browser view opened, and now I receive the same visualization which is running in here. So now just to prove, I can now switch it here. For example, from a triangle mode to a rectangle mode. And we immediately see that this uh, triangle turned to a rectangle view. We see that in both systems. And I can as well use the, the switcher in here. You see that it's switching and it stopped to, to toggle the 
the state of that output of the generator. And there's even a better possibility, or even another possibility, I can do the same thing as well, not only on my computer here, but as well on a tablet computer, which I have already prepared, of course. So you can see that. Perhaps I come a little bit closer to the camera. So let's do the, sa the same thing. Uh, oh, unfortunately, I, I lost my login credentials. No problem. Takes me a second to log in again. So, okay, so I'm logged in. So go to the topology view, take the list view of the PLCs on the front side here, take that device here, go to the web visualization and check and receive the same visualization as we have it running now on the computer or, or on the, the target device here with the new switcher edit. So here we are, and if I switch on the switcher, then we have again this switching and changing of the states of that generator output. Oops. So I have, this is already a very, very powerful possibility to check and to, let's say, debug somehow the application. You can provide special pages on your controller, which are, for example, for diagnostic information. And in case I do not want to prepare a special visualization for that, there's another way to get diagnostic information by using parameters. For that purpose, I take in this case another device here. I hope that you can see that, but I'm not absolutely sure. Perhaps I have to, to change the camera position a little bit. Oh, yeah, you can see that. It's that device here, yeah, and this has a connected motor. And this has a parameter, which is called motor speeds. So for example, I want to know does the motor work at all because the application has not switched it on. I can now public, uh, publish this uh, wearable motor speed in order to manually check whether the motor is really turning in case I want to have it turning. So I give here another where value. Instead of zero, I give the two. And I hope you see that now the motor is turning and the thing is running here. And just to show the opposite, I stop it again with the value one, uh, zero, and then it stopped. So these features already offer me a really good access to the application. And now the idea is I'm not in the same network here. I'm working in different networks. So if I was now somewhere in my holiday, I could do the same check just with an internet connection of my tablet computer to the cloud and from the cloud to the controller in here. I can check these values. As I said, of course, the limiting factor here is the internet speed. However, it works and it can be really done. I have done it here as well already with my smartphone. Of course, the display is not that huge. However, it works in the same way. Now, another thing is debugging. Debugging means taking the IDE and taking a look to the application running on site. We can do that. And I take now the Codesys development system once again. Now there's usually this view that you have. You have a local so-called gateway, which is the intermediate software between your IDE here running on your computer and the controllers you want to program or you want to debug. So this gateway is the intermediate software which handles the communication. But you've seen that there's now another gateway added. Where does this come from? It's very simple. It comes from the Codesys automation server. If we go back, we can here have these gateways and I can now register a gateway to that server. This is done by a special service in here. Um, edge gateway, I can connect an edge gateway to that server. And this is what I have already done before. So this gateway is available. And this gateway, as soon as I'm connected with my IDE to that cloud 
platform to that account is now available here locally too. So I can now go to scan network and scan all these devices which are here on my demonstrator. So I can, for example, choose that one here, establish a connection, of course, with all the login credentials that are requ required since the latest version of codes due to security reasons. And I can now immediately log in. So I can now access to the application, which is already running. In normal cases, when we hit, didn't have the connection right as before, we needed, of course, to download the application at first step. In this case, I just generated this new project from that installation of coaches. So I can immediately log in and see all the, the variables in live mode running on that controller. So if I switch that again, we see here that the variable has changed from true to false, just to show the other way around. Yeah, and I can, of course, do that manually in here too. So do real debugging. And again, if I'm sitting here in Kempton and I have an internet access to the cloud server and you have on your side entered some of your controllers on a tenant which I have access to, then I can access to them from Germany to Colombia. No problem. And this is, of course, a real big benefit of the cloud platform. Now, how was this done in the past? Codesys has already the possibility to build up remote connections. Yeah? Instead of entering here and scanning here for a network or entering here a, a local gateway that I knew, I could as well enter an IP address for a gateway, a remote gateway. This is already possible or just enter here an IP address. However, there's a big problem doing so. There might be some nice animals in between, <laughs> not animals, but somebody in the middle could hack that communication and uh, do some things that I do not want him to do. So man of the middle attack is the security term for that, the threat for that. So therefore, this is no good idea anymore. 10 years ago, we didn't care about that, but today life has changed, world has changed. So how was this done so far with security in mind? So no direct connection anymore, but uh, using some software in between, some VPN tunnels, some firewalls. And of course, this makes all the work very complicated. How can a cloud help me to have this direct access? We have seen that it works. Is that secure? Yes. If there's a secure communication established, then it is secure. And this is what exactly what we do here. And how does this look like? It looks like this. I'm here on my computer and I have a encrypted communication to the cloud platform. So there is no possibility to, to hack this communication because it's end to end encrypted. No way. And from the cloud to my local controller network, there's as well an end to end encryption. And there's another security, let's say, gateway gate. There's here this edge gateway, which is in front of it. This can run, of course, on the same device as a controller, but typically it's running on, a, on an abstracted device, which abstracts my controller network from the internet so that nobody can directly access to your controller only through that gateway. And this gateway has the end-to-end -end encryption again, so there is no possibility to really enter that. This is a secured platform, which we have, uh, um, which we realized by means of TLS encryption with X509 certificates, which are the same certificates that we use for online banking, for example. And in order to be sure that this is really no static check that we do, we have regular audits in order to see if in case there are things changed or new threats. So this is this communication is regularly audited and we have uh, just recently received the, the past signal. So everything is okay and it's really secure. You can rely on it. So again, I want to show you that live now. I have already done that. You see that I could just log in and I have the communication, all the possibilities as I sat directly next to the controller. In this case, I do so, but the communication is handled via the cloud. 
And I could do the same thing from at home, from somewhere on a business trip in a hotel or in the Hollywood. Could check in case there's something not working properly, whether um, there's something to do. And then I could uh, work here or work here. Huh? Quite handy. Good. Now I leave my life part, taking a look on my watch in order not to, to uh, speak too long. There are now two more points where I cannot show you something in a live mode because these are not yet implemented, but it's a little bit an outlook what will be possible in the future. For example, in the cloud, there may be add-on tools to improve quality. Before I start, one question, how do you use tools today? Or which tools do you use? For example, do you already work with source code management using, for example, Subversion or Git? Or do you use add-on tool for static code analysis, for checking the code, um, whether there are several rules obeyed or not? Or do you check the runtime on the controller? You can already do that today. There are available add-on tools for the development interface, so for the code's installation, which I have, of course, installed. Perhaps i show you something. For example, let's go static analysis. We can go to settings and see the rules. And you see there's a whole a huge list of rules that I could check. And if I do so, now I, I won't do that right now because it's not the topic of the presentation today. If I run the static analysis, this would take, depending on the project, some seconds or some minutes until the, the check results are displayed. So this is done at the moment locally on my computer. But why not use these tools in the cloud? Well, for example, source code management via Subversion Git in a cloud platform. We have seen that with the application repository. Remember that one here. We have, of, of course, a, 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 a kind of, let's say, a version control management, but on the complete project level, not on the object level inside a project. We cannot uh, change different objects inside. But this is possible, and this will be in the future possible with Git. You can, of course, do that right now with a Git client somewhere in a remote installation or even in a GitHub. Static code analysis. Yeah, you could then, for example, use a project directly from the cloud repository, so directly from, from here. In the future, there might be some, some buttons to run static analysis or check the, the rules for the static analysis which means that there is no computing capacity of your local computer use, but only of the cloud platform. And as we said before, in case you have huge projects, you can access to infinite CPU performance in order to speed that process up. The big benefit is that you need no rent, no installation, no maintenance of the tool. Of course, there will be a pay-per-use business model for it. So if you say, I only use that twice a year, then you're only have to pay twice a year for it. The same thing is concerning the storage computing capacity. Yeah, so we don't need the capacity on our own workstations. We reduce the effort for installation maintenance. And the big issue is that everybody who has access, who has access to that cloud account, to that tenant, can immediately access to these add-on tools. So there is no installation on different computers of the local workers necessary. So this is something that we're working on and I have no, let's say, no time schedule so far for it, but in the future, we will offer these services as well in the cloud. And last but not least, we could as well talk about development environment in the cloud. Why shouldn't we use that in the cloud? And I don't know how you use Microsoft Office. So far, I personally am using a local installation on my computer, but it's probably next year that we will 
switch from the local installations to the cloud installations, MS Office 365, where the, the application is running in the cloud and I just need to up and download my files, which does not take that long usually. So it's the same way for the development environment. So this is something that will be available soon. Of course, we know that some of our, the, the competitors in the market already work in that direction, but of course not with that amount of features that Cotis offers. And the idea is that you can then work on a computer as you do it right now with a local installation, but as well in a browser. And instead of using a PC, you could as well use a tablet computer or even a smartphone for, for small and simple changes. But of course, only if you want to do so. This is an internal picture somehow. And yeah, I want to tell you a little bit how our vision is. How do we want to switch from a well-established and a full functional development system running on a desktop version to a cloud version? There's of course a kind of roadmap necessary. So today, the only thing is uh, Codes' desktop version with full functionality with classical technologies. But in the future, we want to have a, a branch off with uh, reduced but growing functionality so that in the future, there will be two different possibilities. One possibility running in an app and the other one running in the cloud in an HTML browser. So the browser can be used for the operation. What are the steps in between? Yeah, we need intermediate versions. And the idea is that each of them can be used in real life for a specific group of users. Of course, uh, when we are here, this will not compete to the functionality we have right now on the standard Codes desktop version. But for a simple, let's say, adding of visualizations or a switching of, um, let's say, um, switches inside a, a ladder diagram, this could al already be usable in some, let's say, a year or so. The idea is that both the concept and the formats remain compatible so that users can change from these three implementations of the CODES development system at any time. And this is a little bit our roadmap, yeah? From the desktop version, we want to reduce the, the main parts step by step. So what we have done with the latest service pack is already to modularize all the functional modules of the CODES development system with the goal to move step by step one after the other into the cloud platform. Well, but not directly, but on a common code base so that these things can be used on desktop and on the cloud based running system. So what will be the benefits? For sure that there is a platform independence in software engineering for automation projects. So you can use of new device classes, smartphones, tablet computers, I don't know any panels where you have a browser running on, which gives you, of course, more flexibility. There will be no need for installation, maintenance and updates. You just work with the development system. All versions will be available at any time. So if you say, oh, this project was made with an older version, just take the older version. It's installed on the cloud platform. Remember, infinite storage capacity, so no problem. Different users work with the same identical versions. Yeah? So nobody will say, oh, have you installed that library? Did, did you miss that package? Otherwise you will not run. Everything will be installed in that cloud platform. You can just work with it. And uh, you can just use these functional extensions when required. Furthermore, we have the idea to offer regular high quality early adopter versions. So if you say, hey, I'm really keen on knowing what the guys in Germany are doing there in the latest um, or in the newest release, which will be in a few months, then you can start with an early adopter version to see how this works. Perhaps give us some feedback in case you find, oh, there's something still buggy, then this is of course some feedback and some positive um, aspect for us. But in any case, it will be risk-free testing at a really early stage. And as we said, infinitive computing performance, the compiler runs, especially for large projects, will be very, very fast, depending on the CPUs that are booked by you. 
So our goal is to create an ideally adapted working environment for every user. You will be free to work where and the way you want to do that, no matter if it's on the classical PC or on a tablet computer or whatever you want to use as your computing device, your engineering device. Okay, so coming to the last few slides, conclusion. Cloud services have become part of our lives. We have seen that family photos and so on, but as well in other things like engineering of automation tasks, because they simplify our life in many ways already today. And they will be much more in the future. And if you want to do so, check it out. The automation service free of charge. So can everybody of you can register for his own tenant for his own account up to two controllers are free of charge and I know of course that you as a university already work with special tenants so this is our offer for you to work with that and make the experiences yourself thank you very much for the attention